Hey, and welcome to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. Uh, I'm one of the co-hosts for this show, Sam Rochel. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University, and today I'm joined by Dr. Teresa Laverne, uh, formerly a university, uh, another a professor at another SEC university uh, before making her transition uh, into her current role and, and uh, work in the industry. Uh, but but good, great opportunity to speak with you, Teresa. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great today. Thank you for talking to me. I appreciate this opportunity. You bet. You bet. And I know you're uh, very well known in the poultry science community, have been very active in poultry science association and, and you know, had a lot of connections through your time at, at LSU um, and then the last several years in the industry. Um, but just to give the audience a little more background, can you can you talk about uh, your career path to your current position? Um, and, and, and I know you have an extensive experience with the industry. And as you mentioned, um, a, a real breadth of, of working from from nutrition and also management. So I know that that's been very valuable for, for the people that you work with. Um, with the, the current uh, offerings that, that you have, uh, what are some of the, the research uh, or, I guess, industry problems that you're trying to, to solve through, through your offerings? Okay, well, I'll kind of answer that through natural biologics and our objectives and um, things we, w- we want to do. So being listening to the name, knowing the name natural biologics indicates that the offerings we have we want are natural. Um, generally plant derived type compounds and we want them all or we look for those that are geared towards improving the health of livestock and poultry because our company is across different species um, started in, mostly in the dairy industry um, and we you know so obviously have offerings for dairy um, beef cattle poultry as well as swine um, and, you know same maybe the same compounds across all species but um, as a company, or um, I, you know, our objectives are to look for those naturally derived compounds geared towards the health. Um, and it's you know, in today's world, uh, gut health is a lot of what we talk about. Um, it's kind of amazing how much we know about the gut microbiome and what we can do to it. But then at the same time, how much we do not know yet. So it's a huge opportunity uh, for research and looking at different modes of action of these compounds and uh, how they affect performance and growth rate. Um, and just to kind of give you a little idea, of course, we'll have, we have prebiotics um, derived from the yeast cell Saccharomyces cerevisiae, you know, the, the moss or the man and oligosaccharides, which are very well researched. And we see their benefits, you know, being antipathogenic and just improving the overall gut health. So we have some of those offerings. We have some probiotic strains. Um, we also, you know, have beta glucans, which are geared toward working with the uh, immune system um, and helping respond to immune challenges. Um, another compound that we're really excited about um, that's kind of new and we're um, gathering a lot of data on right now is a medium chain monoglyceride called glycerol monolarate, which is um, definitely antiviral. And it also has some antipathogenic um, properties as well. So that's kind of a a really exciting area for us as we explore applications for that and its efficacy. And um, we've we've been doing quite a bit with swine, but also starting in poultry with that one as well. Yeah, no, that's great. And I'm sure it's fun. It it sounds like there's a a broad range in the portfolio. So you have different uh, mechanisms of of action. And so there's, there's ways to apply different combinations and try to find things that, that make sense for, um, you know, certain, certain problems with that. I mean, are there, um, you know, I know from gut health, we often talk about uh, in the poultry world, you know, coccidiosis and necrotic enteritis are kind of the two ones that, that lead the way, um, and, and people battle most routinely. I mean, do you have, um, specific applications in gut health, um, that you're looking at? So, we have um, done a little bit of research since I've been with natural biologics in that area. Um, of course, some of these compounds we have are being used. You know, of course, there's some probiotic strains. We see a lot of bacillus that can be effective at inhibiting um, the Clostridium perfringens, right, which goes along with the necrotic enteritis challenges. Um, and even um, the uh, 
compounds, the carbohydrate compounds derived from the yeast cell wall, those also can show some efficacy against some imeria. So, you know, it's just kind of a, a combination, whether it's directly or indirectly affecting or improving um, or preventing necrotic enteritis, you know, just improving the gut health overall, um, obviously can play a huge role in preventing minimize or minimizing the effects of necrotic enteritis. Sure. And then just kind of um, overall, you know, working to shift a bi- in the microbiome um, by what we can feed or put into that gut, um, shifting that um, bacteria to be more favorable, um, positively affecting growth performance. You know, we, we're learning new things about that with the postbiotics now, you know, with prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics, those compounds um, that are being produced, you know, they're, um, sh- we're shifting again. So lots of things um, to, that we can throw at the issue and looking for great combinations and um, just overall improving the health through these different compounds is going to help right. minimize it better. Yeah, that's that's really neat. I mean, the the medium chain uh, aspect that that's something personally I've been very interested in. You know, we've done some work around different uh, coccidial challenge models, and and we consistently see this impact on uh, lipid utilization. And there's some data that indicate you know different types of of fatty acids um, have different uh, responses uh, under that condition. And actually, the the medium chain seem to be much better utilized. And so I think there's a, a lot of potential there, um, you know, beyond just the the direct interaction with the pathogens, but also just enhanced nutrient utilization uh, as well. So I think that t- to me, that seems like that's probably a promising uh, area. Mm-hmm. We're very excited to have the opportunity to work in that area. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I know that, um, you know, you've, you're doing some work uh, in, in the area of kind of food safety, too. We're hearing a lot of that. And what, what can we do, you know, nutritionally or management wise uh, on farm pre harvest that, that helps uh, with food safety as well? Sure. Some of our offerings are geared towards helping. Uh, reduce salmonella prevalence and load. And of course, a lot of times when we think about that, as far as feed additives, one of our possibility or one of our feed additives we can use are the prebiotics, moss, um, derived from the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So yes, um, quite a bit of our efforts go into looking at how we can reduce the effect or minimize salmonella. And, you know, we know there's not one magic potion, one (laughs) magic thing we can do, right? It's an overall salmonella control program, pre-harvest to post-harvest. You know, it's a a whole big, complicated scenario. And we have to break it down into pieces to hopefully be effective, you know, throughout the entire system, pre to post-harvest. So my experience, what I do is pre-harvest. So, of course, you know, I have feed additives, but... In working with the industry and, you know, customers, you know, we talk about the entire program, you know, from the breeders um, and minimizing salmonella in the breeders, whether it's, you know, through a feed additive or through vaccination. Of course, biosecurity throughout the entire system is huge in preventing um, salmonella problems. You know, we talk about in the hatchery things that can be done there with sanitation again. And then when we get into that grow out bird, whether it's a broiler or a turkey, you know, a feed additive that we can use um, to help, again, minimize the colonization or prevent the colonization of salmonella in the gut, which then, of course, would carry into the processing plant. So we just kind of focus on minimizing, reducing prevalence and load of salmonella pre-harvest. And that way, you know, we, we hope to put less into the processing plant that would ultimately end up with the consumer. But it's just, you know, just an overall program we talk about, including feed additives, um, might be vaccination of your breeders or your layers. Um, you know, we talk about the egg side of the industry, litter management, you know, whether we use a litter treatment or whether we windrow litter to pasteurize it and get rid of some of these pathogens. Um, of course, you know, I said biosecurity already. That's for the best of 
everything in the industry, right? To prevent diseases as well as, you know, these pathogenic problems that could end up a food safety issue. And then education. Of course, I come from an education background. So I always, you know, emphasize it's important to educate everybody on the farm. You know, the general farm workers may not understand people are the number one means of moving (laughs) diseases and spreading diseases as well as carrying pathogens on the farm. So I think education of anybody that can come in contact with the poultry uh, is important as well. Um, Help them understand the biosecurity um, procedures, why things have to be done a certain way or not. Um, Maybe they don't understand completely the feed additives, um, but I think it's important to let them know there's some things we're trying to do in the feed as well. Uh, It's not just, just one you know, thing we can do. It's an entire program. And I think education of anybody involved um, helps in preventing um, problems that could lead to food safety issues. Yeah. Yeah. Natural Biologics is using cutting edge science to dig deeper into the poultry health challenges you face. By gathering scientific evidence, they identify the most effective combinations of natural ingredients that improve animal health. Visit naturalbiologics.com slash poultry to see the newest research in both turkeys and chickens. Thank you uh, for your perspective and, and you know, all the, the work that you're doing in this area. And, and thank you for taking the time to, to join and share with the audience today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.